Hey there, sheepdoggers, and welcome to a little Blood Bowl 2 talk. Um, with the Necromantic team coming out very soon, probably by the time this video is released, uh, they'll actually be out, and I'll probably do a video on them as well, because I do, in fact, really enjoy the Necromantic team. Um, I find them very fun. They're not quite as fun for me as, as the Skaven, but uh, I do find them very entertaining. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today, and, you know, I don't do Blood Bowl 2 videos very often anymore. And there's a very, there's a very kind of solid, multiple solid reasons for that. Uh, the thing I want to talk about will kind of evolve as we go, but it's basically, you know, there seems to be a certain barrier for Blood Bowl 2, I feel. Um, and I think it has a lot to do with its origins as a tabletop game. You know, I think people who enjoy Blood Bowl 2, uh, people who enjoy Blood Bowl the tabletop game and Games Workshop games can really get into Blood Bowl 2. And uh, other people have been able to get into Blood Bowl 2 as well, which is really impressive in a way. But I feel like Cyanide made, it, made a massive mistake made multiple massive mistakes with this game and part of that was not listening to their customers at all you know cyanide from what i've seen and you know a lot of this is conjecture guys please keep that in mind but from what i've seen cyanide is terrible at, at customer relations you know they don't they're not very vocal they're not very with the community. They don't, if they do at all, kind of you know, put many messages out there for for the for the people for the players. I haven't seen much. You know, occasionally I'll see like an announcement of a new race, very occasionally, which is another thing we're going to be going into. But <clears throat> um, I'm going to be kind of ordering my thoughts as I go. It's it's how I prefer to do my videos. If you can hear a fan in the background, by the way. Uh, if you can hear a noise in the background, it's my fan. Um, it's bloody hot. It's really hard to record videos because I have to turn the damn thing off. And at this point, I'm just going to keep it on. If it's too hot, I apologize for the noise. But there's not much I can do about it. It is way too fucking hot at this point. Um, so yeah, let's talk about Blood Bowl 2. And I've touched on different issues here and there. I've explained why I stopped streaming, why I stopped recording Blood Bowl in that it was the it was the only thing a large majority of my regular viewers would watch and i'm not a blood bowl channel i'm not even a warhammer a games workshop channel i'm a channel that enjoys doing variety and if i have to play one game i will eventually get grumpy get bored and it won't be fun for anybody which is why I, which is what happened with blood bowl 2 and which is why i stopped playing it because it just stopped being fun to make videos i stopped having fun and people slowly were leaving the channel anyway. So it made sense to, you know, kind of just deal with all of those issues together by stopping playing Blood Bowl 2 for the most part and bringing you occasional videos. Uh, I will be doing the Necromantic team. I enjoy them. I'll do a video, maybe two, and that'll be it. Um, so what are the problems with Blood Bowl 2? You know, why did such a fun game not really work I mean it did work and I think a lot of that working came down to a few prominent people I think in the Twitch community slightly more than uh, than YouTube um, you know and I had I had a very definite success with uh, with, with Blood Bowl 2 on, on my Twitch channel I mean I'm don't use my Twitch channel anymore at the moment, I'm f focusing on YouTube, but back when Blood Bowl 2 was announced, you know, I was having much higher consecutive viewers than I'd ever had before, uh, and I think part of that was my enthusiasm for Blood Bowl 2, part of that was from my basic knowledge that people quite enjoyed uh, the mix of my knowledge and just horrible luck, which they could really get behind and enjoy. Um, and I think another part of it was uh, a f few, a fair number of prominent Twitch streamers and maybe YouTubers as well, who uh, you know really made it fun for people to play. Now, 
all of this added up to a high viewer base for a while and a very high player base and the way that they focused on multiplayer wasn't a terrible thing short term now this is one of the things i'm going to be talking about cuz seen seen from a certain seen from a certain aspect you could say that it was a good thing you know you could say that their focus on multiplayer was what really had people having fun and you know and this kind of thing but the problem with it is is that the difference between f playing against the ai and other players is that other players some of them are really good you know the game's been around for so long which means that if your focus is entirely on the on the multiplayer aspect of things you know people are going to run into teams that are ridiculously you know gamed in the sense that the people playing them know exactly how to level them up know exactly how to spec them you know there there's a there's a very clear meta i guess which and this can be a bit of a problem uh, in that new players who don't know will have giant issues getting into the multiplayer aspect of the game because unless they play other new players, they're just going to get their asses kicked. Um, and I think I think this was one of the first major problems and that's one of the reasons why my tutorial videos did so well, especially, is because I was you know people were going on to youtube and just being like i have no idea what to do i you know if i if i level up one of my guys wrong then i've like you know i've screwed myself over i've got points i don't want and you know etc etc and it's perfectly reasonable thing to have you know it's a lot lot different from the tabletop game where you're playing a friend where you're playing people in your local store um you know you know and and they're very they're, there's a much different feel and this is another thing that becomes a problem, is that when you consider things like... When, when you consider things like uh, uh, how competitive people can be in gaming in general, in, in you know, on internet gaming especially, uh, especially when it's kind of random people and just not playing for fun with your friends, uh, it can be very, very fun-killing to get your ass kicked repeatedly by better teams and better players and you know like the same thing happened to me i'm not an amazing volleyball player i never really claimed to be a great blood bowl player at best i could say you know i know what i'm doing but i make too many stupid tactical mistakes i make too many misplays you know if i play for a couple of games in a row i start to lose concentration i start to lose focus uh, I had a, I have a lot more fun playing against the AI, honestly. You know, doing kind of like a, a campaign in Blob Bowl 1. I used to love, you know, taking a goblin team and just having fun with them and, you know, messing up and being dumb and then just enjoying it. I did stream Blob Bowl 1 a few times and uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, and, y you know, like this is, this is really where the issue comes in, is that, you know, you get these really good players playing teams like the uh like the chaos you know chaos kill team which basically the entire you know it's not cheating but it feels like cheating when you play a chaos team that decimates your team and you just want to start again you know when once you've got a couple of deaths and those kind of things, all you want to do is just be like, this is ridiculous, fuck it, I'm starting again. But when you start again, you have to start from scratch, you have to do all the same things over again. It can be not as fun, and like that's one of the reasons why teams like the Bretonians are actually pretty good to have, you know, because they're, they're teams where you can lose some of your crappy guys that's why skaven's fun you know if you're playing as the dark elves and you lose a player you know if you're playing as the dark elves and you come across a high te a high team value chaos team you know that's and you're just starting out you're like well fuck i'm gonna lose players i'm gonna have injured players i i may i may possibly win but it'll be a pyrrhic victory because my entire team will get decimated um and it's the same thing you know 
like with dwarves occasionally and, and and other teams as well. But Chaos is one of the the real clear uh, asshole teams, um, and uh, it can it can re it can really hurt to play those teams sometimes. But anyway, um, the one of the major problems I see with with Blood Bowl Two was the lack of single player. Because it really is, a, it really is, and was a game you could just play and enjoy. You know, I think I think that is something that should have been very obvious to Cyanide, and the fact that they thought that they should turn the entire kind of campaign, single player campaign, into a into a kind of a tutorial almost. You know, no one who knows Blood Bowl will play through that campaign. I can almost guarantee you. Like, it it was the worst. If you're learning the game, I'm sure it was fine. But it was so slow, and it was so janky, and it was just... It was just awful. And that was when I started... Like, when I, when I first started playing Blood Bowl 2, um, the lack of races made me worried. The... DLC for the races made me worried and I think the most telling thing about I think the most telling thing about Blood Bowl 2 and about uh, Cyanide is that you know there's the DLC the undead, the Norse uh, the Lizardmen, the Wood Elves and then we've got the Necromantic coming up and it is, I believe, uh, yeah, the Norse, the Undead, the Necromantic, and the Nurgle teams will be free for PC players if you get Blood Bowl 2 now, kind of thing. You know, it's, it's, on, it's on almost, like, offer, I guess. And them, them, like, you know, they, when the game was initially released, they gave you the other race for free. So when you pre-ordered... You would either get the lizard men or the wood elves. You could choose. I myself chose lizard men because I don't really like the elves for the most part. Um, and after it was released, they said, "Actually, you get both of these teams." And you know, at the time, I was like, "That's really cool of them." But looking back, I can see that they had a lot of opening issues, and I feel like instead of instead of basically saying, "Wow, Blood Bowl Two has released really, really well." Here's a thank you. I think this was a part preemptive and part damage control for all the issues, you know. And, I mean, I think people were already iffy about the game because of the Day 1 DLC. And while it while it was very much a case of like, oh, thanks for, thanks for giving us the, you know, the teams for, um... Thanks for giving us the, the, the teams for free, as it were, you know, instead of making us buy this DLC. I think it didn't help their case that there were so few teams. It didn't help their case that, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of not lazy, but I mean, just the pure fact that all of the cheerleaders are the same redhead. You know, it it's it's not like a massive deal, but it's it's something that was important to the fan base, it's something that was important to the players, and it still isn't fixed, you know, in this game, I played this a couple of days ago, the game you're watching right now, um, and it, it still has bloody redhead cheerleaders, they haven't changed it, and this is the thing, is, if they had, have been pro proactive after the game was released, and start, start getting those races out started started really pushing this game properly instead of dragging their heels instead of setting up the world cup you know i really think that their tactic that their their kind of their game plan for blood bowl 2 was completely wrong i think they saw that this this like really popular release of uh, of Blood Bowl 2, especially comparative to Blood Bowl, you know, the original one, it was popular with uh, the fans. It was popular with Blood Bowl fans, with Games Workshop fans. You know, it wasn't a great game. You know, there's been problems with Blood Bowl 
you know, through all of its iterations. Um, I believe I believe it was Cyanide who originally released Chaos League, which was a game I enjoyed, don't get me wrong, but it had problems as well. And it seems like they're constantly releasing the same game and not really doing much with it also. Um, but yeah, it would have been so much easier for them to have... It would have been not easier, sorry. It would have been much better for them to release the game and then start really, really working on some of the bug fixes, on getting the cheerleaders, on, on all of these things. And they just don't really seem to have done it. They seem to have been focused on the fact that Blood Bowl 2 this time uh, as as opposed to the original Blood Bowl, was so much friendlier to the mainstream. But the problem here becomes is that all of those people who were, you know, jumping onto Blood... Most of those people jumping onto the Blood Bowl 2, kind of, you know, oh, it's just been released, it's a really fun game. You know, it's a mix of, uh, of American football and Lord of the Rings and blah, 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 blah. You know, and and like there, and there was a lot of my microphone almost just <laughs> my microphone almost just almost just fell off my desk. Sorry about that. I really need to get a stand and and a few other things. Uh, so yeah, um, I I think like you know they could have had this great game with a really strong fan base, but for whatever reason they went along with this kind of i think they were hoping to make it to kind of turn it into a pro esports game and it's just that's not something that's going to happen here you know like i'm sure i'm sure original fans and people who have really stuck with blood bowl 2 you know have got into it but it's never going to be a game for the mainstream it's never going to be a game for esports and them focusing on this whole world cup thing has meant that they've slowed down on the races and just little extra things that would show people that they still you know care about the game i mean one of the worst parts about this is the multiplayer you know the multiplayer has just gone badly i mean i ran a kind of ladder type uh <clears throat> sorry that's a misplay that you may have noticed right there um with the uh with the mummy yes i did indeed try to dodge him out accidentally and fucked up and it was terrible i apologize uh yeah you know they haven't fixed the fixed the cheerleaders and it is in fact a fix if all of the races have these redhead skinny booby cheerleaders you know <clears throat> it's not Blood Bowl. It's not the Blood Bowl that people want, at least. And they should know that, and they should fix... They should have fixed that. You know? And they ha the fact that they haven't fixed something like that really shows how far their priorities are off. Their priorities don't seem to be the fans, you know, the fan base, the, the people who who like the game. And, you know, it's been on other things. The multiplayer, you know, you have this kind of uh, ladder type thing you know you can set up cups and you can set up a few other situations but what they should have put in there was the league that is the most important thing in my opinion to have available and like the thing is is this ui is so much friendlier it's so much easier for people to get into the game and new players who give the who gave the game a shot didn't understand why people were so iffy about Blood Bowl. Why, why does Blood Bowl 2 have mixed reviews? It should be positive. It is a good game. But the problem is are still there. The lack of races, you know, when there are so many races there and these races are getting released at a really, uh, like, considering when was Blood... Uh, let's have a look. When was Blood Bowl 2 was released on the 22nd of September almost a year ago and since then they have released two races almost three lizard men and blood Bo and lizard men and wood elves do not count because they were pretty much a pre-order race 
they were pretty almost D day one DLC basically, in my opinion. So in a year they've released three races. That is just unacceptable in terms of people wanting variety. You know, there's there, there comes a point, especially if people are playing a lot, there comes a point where you're just like, I don't like wood elves, I don't like high elves. You know, the dwarves are kind of fun for a bit, but they get boring fast. You know, the Skaven are awesome, but there's only so much, there's only so many times you can get your ass kicked. You know, the Chaos are cool, but everyone plays them because they're fucking killing machines. And they start off very weak. You know, in, in the, in the multiplayer matches, you get, in the public leagues, you get, you get people who will automatically give up if they see a Chaos team against them. Because they'd prefer to give the Chaos team more points. So you get Chaos teams that have barely played a proper match. And are already killing machines because they get so many points. And people don't care about that kind of thing because it's the public league. You know, and in the private leagues, a lot of the time, you know, you, you'd have you'd have fun and you'd have people for a while. But I had, uh, in, in, my, in, my, in my private league, in the Sheepdog Gaming uh, League, we had one guy who had a dark elf team or something got eight wins and zero losses and i think maybe one draw and he sat at the top of the league he sat at the top of the table because of that win to loss ratio you know everyone else who was playing for fun you know they had there were people with like 50 wins and 20 draws and and like 10 losses and they were below him because he had a better ratio and I, as, as the admin, I couldn't get rid of the team. You know, I'd get rid of the team, and all the guy had to do was join back on with, with that team. And, you know, I had, I, at, at the time, you know, we actually had quite a lot of games, and, you know, those kind of things. And, like, this is, again, this isn't, this is another problem, is you have to have people searching. So it worked really well for people who were live streaming the game because all you had to do even if you had a even if you had a medium uh even if you had a kind of medium um kind of league or or medium uh private private league uh you could live stream and people would search and play each other while you were live streaming the problem becomes is once that started to uh, slow down. Uh, people were just playing the same people over and over again, and it became very stagnant. And the thing is, is if they had have started off with the uh, kind of league tables, you know, so you've got like the the equivalent of like the the Coca Cola League, the Premier League. I, I don't know what the football. Uh, it's football or soccer you know you've, you've got you've got like league three which is where you start off and if you if you place in the top couple of teams in the season then you get promoted to the next league if you get in the bottom two teams you get demoted to the league below it and you can go all the way to the top league this ensures that people of people of similar skill people of uh, teams with similar kind of things like that you know, we'll be playing each other. If if someone's really good with a with a team, even if their team isn't as good, they'll keep being promoted. If a person has a good team but aren't that great a player, they will you know, they won't go up as far and they'll kind of, you know, keep going and all this kind of thing. And if if this if this was actually if this was actually a thing, it would have had such better retention. On Blood Bowl 2. And as it is, and I think the reason why they're ad why they're adding the DLC teams more and more is the only time they get good numbers now on 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 their on their kind of like people playing is because pretty much people only play the game in multiplayer or at all when they're playing the new teams when the new team comes out they go oh let's try this team and have some fun with it but the problem here is that it is still 
kind of stagnant in, in multiplayer. You know, as soon as people have played a couple of teams, oh, everyone's playing the same team. You know, they'll play for a couple of days, maybe max, and then they'll go, well, I had fun with that. But no one's playing the single player, really. Because the single player just feels like multiplayer, except for without, you know, m much there, I guess. And, you know, it's, it's just... All, what what has happened is Blood Bowl, two, Blood Bowl 1 had a decent multiplayer community so you could go there, you could get involved you could even join a private league kind of thing and it's a lot of fun, you know, the, the matches were scheduled, you went and played them yeah, there were obviously you know, some really uh, glaring uh, connection problems and, and you know and, uh, and kind of multiplayer issues but honestly it was more fun uh it was more fun playing a league like that it was more fun getting involved like that uh you know instead of just going instead of just going on and clicking like search search what they should have done with this game is make a really really solid campaign single player experience and then have the multiplayer be this like really fun really unique uh extra experience and they just didn't do that they just went let's make the multiplayer the most important thing which means that when the multiplayer a doesn't really work out that well you know you've got so many teams giving up and giving points to teams you know people people as soon as I, i've played countless games and you can probably watch my videos uh where as soon as a guy gets an injury or a death he quits he deletes the team and that's it because on the free ladder that's what you can do you know you 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 just quit and you don't care that you've given a whole load of points to another team you know when you didn't have to there's so there's so much less uh people going through to the end and and it's 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 a shame it is it is a massive shame but that's just how things kind of went and you know i i don't think at this point that that uh, the the undead, the Norse, the necromantic, even the even the fun teams, even the goblin teams, you know, like, I mean, I, I don't really feel like any of that's gonna save the game. It's it's not gonna it's not gonna bring the players back because the pre players have already gotten bored with the with the framework of this game. You know, it's like. Sure, you can cut when a DLC come team comes out. You know, you can play a couple of games with it. But I mean, if you were to ask me, if if the Necromantic team cost money to buy, would I buy the DLC? No, I don't think it would give me enough videos, enough content, and I don't think that it would. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I I don't think that it would be worth the money. So if the Necromantic team cost me money to buy as a DLC, I would absolutely not buy it. Because it's not worth it, you know, it's not it's not worth going online and playing these games. Uh, you know, playing these matches. Uh, it's not really worth uh, running, a, running a video set on this, you know. Like, if I had have done what I was half wanting to do, which was run Blood Bowl 2 into the ground on my channels, you know, just keep playing it until people were sick of me playing it, I would maybe be in a situation where I had a better, uh, better numbers on my videos when I played Blood Bowl, but everything else would have suffered so much worse. And now I'd be in a position where I was Blood Bowl guy, you know, one of those people who is like, you know, like, like some channels play Minecraft. But the problem here is that the viewer demand on Blood Bowl isn't very high. It is the same people everywhere. And to be to try and be competitive in a very low in a very kind of low and let's say uh, specific viewer base, you know, people who people who, who used to watch me on Twitch. I let's say uh, after my peak, after after I was really done with the massive numbers I was getting on Twitch. Um, <clears throat> For, for for that, I would have, like, probably 
let's say let's say 150 to 200 viewers while I was playing Blood Bowl and it was a lot of fun and the people were great I can't stress that enough the the people on Blood Bowl 2 uh, who would watch my stream were awesome and they really got involved they really uh, they really played their hearts out you know they'd love playing me I'd love playing them you know it was so much fun and it's it's such a shame that I couldn't carry it on in a certain respect because I really enjoyed it but if I had 150 to 200 views regardless of what game I switched to I would go down to 30 or below viewers immediately like I, I would still be playing Blood Bowl, and I'd be like, alright guys, we're gonna move on to so-and-so game next, uh, you know, like, hang around if you want, and we'll, we'll get going, like, instantly, and even before I'd finished that, the last, like, match I was playing, uh, I'd start, you know, bleeding viewers, just, just a steady stream of 200, 180, 150, 160. And then when I actually switched games, 30, 25, 20. And it is amazing. Like, even though intellectually you say to yourself, it doesn't matter, I still have people watching me, going from such extremes can really affect your your kind of mental attitude. Um, and it can really start, like, digging into you. You know, and it's, like... The, the main reason I stopped playing Blood Bowl 2 wasn't because I was sick of the game. It wasn't because people were saying, like, oh, you know, why do you have so many views on your video? You're shit at, you're shit at Blood Bowl 2. You know, I got, I got pointed to a couple of hilarious posts by people who had this massive problem with me playing Blood Bowl 2. Uh, and, you know, they were like, the, the original post would be something along the lines of, oh, you know, is there anywhere I can go to learn about Blood Bowl 2? And people will be like, oh, you can watch Knorr, uh, you can watch Sage, you can watch, uh, you know, L uh, Lupak. Uh, oh, and Sheepdog Gaming does a lot of, uh, uh, Sheepdog or Sheepdog Gaming can does a lot of um, uh, video, like tutorial videos, and he streams on Twitch as well. And I'd always get, I'd al there'd always be a comment or two which would be like, oh, that Sheepdog dude, he's shit. And I was just like, man, that's, you know, like... I, I've always been very clear of that fact, like, that I am shit, so the, this this kind of, like, oh, don't don't watch his don't watch his videos, he's shit, it was, it was bizarre to me, but um, but yeah, no, like uh, what I was talking about before is is basically, like, you know the, the reason I stopped wasn't any of the, it wasn't any of those reasons, actually, the reason I really stopped doing uh, Blood Bowl 2 videos and Blood Bowl 2 live streams was that it wasn't nice to have this kind of game that you pretty much have to play. That's not who I am. Like, I loved having all those people in, you know, getting to know people. And I'm really lucky because I do have a fair few people from the Blood Bowl 2 days who just enjoyed me. And they're still here. They still watch stuff. You know, I mean, who knows how long these, uh, the you know, you, you retain viewers. Who knows how long people will stick with you, but it's nice to have a few people who do stick with you, who do, who will watch, uh, you know, not everything you do, because that's, <clears throat> that's an unrealistic expectation, but who do watch you play certain games. It's great, and uh, my real main problem was just this kind of feeling of that it's not worth playing something if it's not Blood Bowl 2. You know, that doesn't feel good. You know, I don't, it's not, and more and more as, as that went on, I started just having this really negative attitude while playing these games, uh, while play, playing these matches, while playing Blood Bowl 2. And for me, that, that was the problem. And, you know, a, a lot of people, uh, I did lose a lot of viewership, especially, especially on Twitch. I lost a lot of viewership from people who just wouldn't watch anything else I did. And again, I don't have a problem with that, but it's it really is a reason, I think, why Blood Bowl 2 
dropped off so quickly is that Pete, there was big, big interest in it because it's an amazing game and lots of new players going, wow, Blood Bowl is an awesome game because this Blood Bowl 2 was so much more friendly than the original Blood Bowl. It was easier to get into and the interest kind of sparked more guides, the interest sparked more uh more players, uh, more more popular live streamers and, and YouTubers to play it, and it kind of it kind of went on a bit of a roll, and it was a really great roll for a while. But the fact remains is that you know people, especially 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 the the live streamers and the you know content creators in general, they realised that there. Are, it was more of a flash in the pan and it was going straight back to where it was with Blood Bowl 1, you know, and there's m multiple reasons which I've already talked about, um, you know, just in general, people are friendly and everything, but they still want to win and you get a lot of teams just giving up and it, there's a lot of aspects of it that kind of killed the game and, and part of it is just how Blood Bowl is or was and you know there, there's other reasons as well obviously um you know sometimes you feel like people are cheating because they get such good roles but the thing the thing that people always forget and you know on on my on my videos and on, on my live streams you know i don't think i'm any i don't think i roll particularly worse than everyone else i think possibly the uh the importance of my fails is really where it hits home you know basically like when i roll a one it's on a going for it to get a touchdown whereas other people will roll ones you know when it's less important i would say at least you know like i, I may be wrong on that but people do tend to remember the failures more than the successes so it does often feel and it's it's a it's a thing like especially a new player would start to find frustrating is you do feel like you're literally the most unlucky person in the world. And it's fun to talk about, you know, your failures, and it's fun to talk about all the problems you have um, in the game, but, you know, at a certain point, it does literally just become frustrating. Um, and, you know, there, there are other problems as well. The slowness of DLC until recently, which, again, you know, is, I feel, a bit obvious in its... I don't want to be harsh to the game because I know people, you know, probably still on my channel, like, there are probably still people who like Blood Bowl 2 and who, who will watch, you know, Blood Bowl 2 content and that kind of thing. Um, I, I don't want to be harsh to the game. I don't want to be particularly like, this is a bad game because it most definitely isn't. It's an ineffective change. There was, you know, if, if this is how it was going to go, there was no reason to just not have not keep blood bowl the original blood bowl uh they didn't make any particular changes and they've actually you know they're taking so long to release new races and and all these kind of things that it's just died out again you know like there was interest in blood bowl uh people people were enjoying the game there was you know high viewing on 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 twitch and on on youtube and all those kind of things and it's just died out because of multiple reasons so i can only you know i don't check the the multiplayer stuff but i can only assume that it's it's similar on the on the multiplayer stuff i can only assume that there, there, there just aren't that many people who who really play blood bowl that aren't hardcore fans anymore who only play blood bowl 2 that aren't really hardcore that are just uh hardcore fans now and I'm going to leave you with this, which is, if you do enjoy Blood Bowl 2, and if you do enjoy Blood Bowl in general, if you watch it on Twitch, or if you watch it on YouTube, how many of those people are either variety streamers or variety YouTubers? You know, I would, I would put it to you that probably anyone who plays Blood Bowl 2 is either not really worried about their channel because they do it for fun and entertainment or they're starting to try and expand you know they're stop they're, they're slowly stopping playing blood bowl 2 uh and they will do uh they will do sh less videos or shorter streams 
and they're starting to play more other games. That that would be my thought. So I'm going to leave you with that and uh, just, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm not saying you shouldn't play it. I'm not saying, I'm not really saying anything. I'm just having a quick talk about, you know, everything to do with Blood Bowl 2. And uh, yeah, look out for the Necromantic uh, videos, which will be coming soon. Maximum two, I would imagine. And who knows, maybe they'll add in a proper single player, and I'll do some videos on it on the future. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It always helps me out a lot. And I will see you in the next one.